comes at you and he's attacking you, honey, you need to understand he might know a little something, something, but God knows God. Look, he got, listen. The devil might be playing uh, chess, but God's playing three-dimensional chess. He's he 20, 30, 100 moves before the devil. He's like, the devil coming? Well, I got a, I got a way of escape. Somebody say, praise the Lord for the way of escape. He said, I got a way of escape for you to get on out. They trying to attack you at your job? That's all right. Oh, they fired you at your job? But that's okay, because I already had another one prepared for you. Somebody ought to give God some praise. I already had another place prepared for you. So the devil is not omniscient. He couldn't destroy Jesus when Jesus was a baby, though he did what? He did try. But wait a minute. He didn't give up. What about when Jesus is now 30 years old and Jesus is a man? What are we talking about today? We're talking about the victory of Christ. God helped him overcome when he was a baby. Now let's see what happened when he was a man. When he was a man and he was about to start his ministry at age 30, the devil figured it out again. But see, the devil needed some help because John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He, he, he uh, broadcasted it, that this is the one. Oh, now the devil knows. Oh, this is the one. I think it is the one. And, of course, Jesus started telling John's disciples to follow him, right? So now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 that the Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness to be what? Tempted of the devil. Ah, but here's the problem. The problem is now Jesus is not a little baby anymore. Jesus has been water baptized. He's been spirit baptized. He got some power. And the devil's coming at him. And he's not trying to listen now. He's not trying to kill him like he did when Jesus was a baby. What he's trying to do now is not kill him. He's trying to tempt him. See, the devil, if, if the devil can't kill you, then he'll go to plan B, and that is to tempt you, to seduce you, because that one's just as good as killing you. In other words, the devil was thinking, as a baby, I'm going to try to take him out. That didn't work. God was omniscient. He played me on that. He put a back door, and he, and he got the baby out. But now Jesus is a full-grown man, but he's in the anointing. So what am I going to do? He's out there fasting for how long? 40 days in the wilderness. And the devil comes to him, he tempts him. If you be the son of God, the devil's always going to question who you are in the Lord. Well, if you really be a Christian, you wouldn't do that. See, they see, they see the devil? Somebody say, if you. Don't you have a doubt about who you are? You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know who you are. I said you need to know who you are in Christ. The devil, come on. Now, if you be a child of God, turn those stones to bread. The man was hungry. He had fasted for 40 days. It was not evil for him to hunger. It was not evil for him to want some bread. What would have been evil would have been for him to eat before God said so. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what the devil did, he said, I'm not going to try to kill him because he's got power now. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get him to kill himself. See, the devil, when the Bible says the devil comes for three reasons, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, that word destroy does not mean necessarily to kill you with death. It literally means to make you of none effect. So if the devil can get you to disobey God, then you're of none effect. In other words, when Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of evil, the devil didn't strike him dead right then, but he made the man of God of none effect. Why? Because when he ate that fruit of evil, evil and sin went into him. And from that point on, he was not the man of righteousness. He was a man of none effect. Give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about. All the devil has to do is get you to listen to him instead of listening to God, and all of a sudden, you're of none effect. You're destroyed because now you, 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 you're not the man of God, the woman of God. So the devil tried to defeat him by tipping him with disobedience. But then that didn't work. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What did he do? He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, if you just bow down and worship me, you can have it all. He said, no. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only, and only him shall you serve. Then he said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with the, I got one more chance at him. I'm going to go with the big one. 
the one that gets every man pride. He said, he said, look, Jesus. He took him to a high, the, the, the top of the temple. He said, if you, if you jump off the temple, he said, God's angels will catch you. And everybody will see openly that you are the Son of God. Go ahead, do it. And he said, no, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So in essence, he did not listen to the devil, and the devil was defeated in what he tried to do, and that is to get Jesus to disobey. So there was again the victory of Christ. Give Christ another bit. Round two. Christ wins again. Round one. The baby was delivered. Round two. The, the grown man did not take the bait of the temptation of the devil. But guess what the scripture says? The scripture says, the devil went away disappointed, but only for a season. Somebody say he's coming back. You got to be careful. Don't ever think that you just defeat the devil one day and that's it. He, he, no, he's coming back. He keeps trying to come back. He keeps trying to come back if you keep putting on that armor. He keeps trying to come back, and you that's why you have to put on the armor every day. You have to put, when the, when the woman was earlier today during the announcement was talking about you got to eat that spiritual bread every day, she meant every day. You got to put on the word every day. You got to put in the word every day. You got to pray every day. Come on, church, you got to, this is, because the devil is trying to come at you every day. Every day. Somebody say every day. Say, I know that's right. Now listen. He came back the third time. And this time, Jesus is about to go to the cross. Now, this is interesting. Now, listen now. This is very interesting. The first round, round one, how did he try to defeat Jesus? With death, right? Little baby just tried to take him out. Second round, Jesus is a grown man. How did he try to defeat him? With disobedience. He wanted, him to, tempt, he wanted to tempt him to disobey. Because God told him to, 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 to worship him only. God told him to fast. God told him the things to do. And the devil was trying to get him to disobey God. First time, death. Second time, disobedience. This is round three, right? Amen. Guess what the devil does this time? He kind of, he doesn't have new tricks, but he mixed it up a little bit. You know, it's like, you know, left, right, and left. He, he, he mixed the combination up a little bit. He said, I'm going to try, watch this. I'm going to try disobedience first as plan A, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to go back to death, plan B. Watch this. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, how did he try to get him to disobey? He worked through Judas. The Bible says the devil entered the heart of Judas, and Judas went to the chief priest and sold Jesus out for some chicken change, right? Why? Because in Judas's polluted mind, he was thinking, I'll force Jesus' hand. God has told him to die for the sins of man, but if I turn him over to the chief priest, surely he's going to show them I'm, the, I'm not dying like that. I'm the Lord. I'm going to call forth my angels. That would have been powerful, but it would not have been the will of God. Can I get an amen? It would not have been the will of God. It's like when, when Jesus was taken from Pilate to Herod, and Herod said, show me some of your magic tricks. Just show me something to prove that you're the son of God. And Jesus just sat there and didn't show me anything. Amen? Amen? Well, church, here's what I want you to know. Jesus didn't take the bait for disobedience. Amen? Amen? So then what did the devil do? The devil said, okay, that one didn't work, so I'm going to go back to, to my original plan, which was death. I'm just going to take him out. I'm just going to kill him. But I told you that the devil is not omniscient. I told you that the devil is not smarter than God. I told you that the devil is not even on the same level as God. Do you realize that the devil was so limited in his understanding of what was going on that he thought by putting Christ to death, he was going to win, but he was really just playing into God's hand. Are you hearing me today? He was playing right into God's hand because Jesus said, for this cause have I come into the world to die for the sins of men. The devil didn't understand that when Jesus was on the cross, listen down, listen, when Jesus was on the cross and cried out and said, 
Eli Eli Lama Shabbatani translated, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? When the devil heard that, he was dancing. When the devil heard that, the demons were leaping. When the devil heard that, they were high-fiving. They said, we got him now. He's crying out. He's lost his faith. He's saying that God has forsaken him. We got him right where we want him. And the Lord was saying, praise the Lord. We got the devil right where we want him. Because when he cried out and said, why has thou forsaken me? What he was not doing was demonstrating a lack of faith. Or what he was signaling was the fulfillment of faith. That was the moment that God laid all the sin of the world on Jesus' hand. And because of that, he had to separate from the Father. Church, I want you to understand right now that when Jesus was on that cross, you can talk about the blood. You can talk about the nails. You can talk about the back scourging. You can talk about the 150 uh, a pound of cross that he had to take up 350 feet up to the mountaintop to be crucified. You can talk about the pain. You can talk about the suffering. You can talk about the, 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 the embarrassment, the humiliation, dying in a criminal's death. But what you really got to get is the fact that when Jesus got up there and God put his hand on his head as the scapegoat of God, it was in that moment that he did something that was inconceivable. At that moment, he was separated from the Father. And the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, the Word, Jesus Christ, the Son, had never been separated from the Father. He became separated from the Father because, he, because the righteous Son of God became sin. And He became sin so that you could become righteous. He became separated from the Father so that you would never be separated from the Father. He said, because of what I'm doing right now, when I said, why has thou forsaken me? I'm really saying, thank you, because now, because of what I'm doing, you will never leave nor forsake the body of Christ. Give God some praise. You will never be forsaken. The devil didn't know that. He didn't understand that. He didn't understand that before Jesus died, all the sin, all your sin, all my sin, past, present, and future, was poured into Jesus. No wonder he was crying out. God, being the holy God he was, he had to turn his back on that sin. But he could never turn his back on that obedience. And church, I want you to know that because Jesus was obedient unto death, death could not hold him because he did everything the Father did. The devil thought, oh, he's defeated. But actually, what he was, he put himself in a place not as to be defeated, but to be exalted. Because he uh, was obedient unto death, God has therefore highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. And on the third day, he did what? He arose, church. He arose. He went through Good Friday. He went through Holy Saturday. But early Sunday morning, on the third day, as he said, he did what? He arose. I said, he arose. Church, the devil didn't realize what was going to happen. Man didn't realize what was going to happen. But Jesus said what was going to happen, and it happened as he said. Give God some praise. Church, I want you to get this if you don't get anything else. I said that on the third day, a lot of people have problems with this. They'd be trying to do some math and figure this out. Said, Wait a minute, he did. Three days later, uh, he was going to rise, but I thought he died on Friday. Three days later would have been Monday. Maybe he died on Thursday. Yo, he didn't say after three days. He said on the third day. He said on the third day, I will arise. He, he died on Friday. That was day one. He was, he was resting in the tomb on Saturday. That was day two. Early Sunday morning, he arose. That was day three. As he said, he arose as he said. Now, here's what I want you to get. Here's what I want you to get. This is the most important thing. Jesus died on Friday. And when he died, the devil thought he won. And his disciples, listen to me very carefully. The devil thought he won. And his disciples thought he was defeated. Oh. 
what? Oh yeah, read the Bible. It's all through the Bible. Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24. It's all there. His apostles thought he was defeated. Because why? Because they were looking at the natural circumstances. And here's what I want you to get from this story of the victory, the, the, the good news of the victory of Christ in which you can have victory in your life. And that is, uh, uh, don't ever judge anything by natural appearances. Yes. I want you to get that today. Yes. The gospel is trying to tell you just as, listen, just as Jesus said it, it will happen. If Jesus said you the head and not the tail, it'll happen. If Jesus said you a lender and not a borrower, it'll happen. If Jesus said that by his stripes you're healed, honey, you better, don't worry about what the doctor said. Good God Almighty. It's like yesterday, like that movie I just saw, Breakthrough. Don't you listen. Did everybody wrote that little boy off? But that mother cried. God help my child. She cried out with her loud voice. And then all of a sudden that thing said, Church, it ain't over till God says it's over. You need to know what I'm talking about today. You need to understand. Don't ever judge anything by that. And listen, but you say, but they died. Well, honey, guess what? If they knew the Lord, they live. They ain't dead. Because Jesus lives, they live too. Don't worry about your daddy. Don't worry about your mama. Don't worry about your son. Don't worry about the Jesus died so that they can live. So that when they leave this body, their spirit can go on and live forever. Amen. Don't you ever judge anything by appearances. And then, what's the other lesson from this uh, uh, gospel of the victory of Christ? Uh, and that is, don't judge anything before it's time. Don't, I said, don't judge anything. Well, you know, I, I, I went to a funeral recently, praise the Lord, go to a lot of funerals, learn a lot of things. And it was a tough situation because there was a young man who died. And, and when I say young, see, a lot of y'all who are in your 30s, you think I'm old, but see, when you get in your 60s, you realize 50 is young. Come on, somebody. Help me in this right here. Hey, praise the Lord. You be like, yeah, your uncle, you kind of old. Yeah, when you, you get up here, you be, you, be, you be calling folk young in 50s too, you know? Praise the Lord. Somebody who's 100 be calling me kid. Anyway, but, but my point is, don't judge anything before it's time. At this funeral, there was a young man who died. And... His mother got up on at the funeral. It was amazing to me because I never experienced anything like that before. Because usually when a child dies, the, the parent is wiped out. They can't, they can't get up. You know, they can't. But this mother got up at the funeral. And she said, you know, she said, my son was going through. She said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He was going through. And she said, he said to me, Mama, you know, I was a high school sports champion and my future was bright and all these things and I thought I was going to make the NBA and it didn't happen and then I came back home and he said, bottom line mom, he said I'm not where I think I should be and then the next thing you know he's involved in a, in a situation that really he shouldn't have been at that place and at that time and with the things that he was dealing with, and death ended up happening, and he, he died. What am I trying to say to you? He might have, he might have felt like I'm, my, my, my life looks lost, and things look hopeless, and, and I'm not where I should be. I mean, how many of us have said that? The things have not worked out the way I thought. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I think I should be. But honey, I'm just here to tell you. I dropped by here to just tell you one thing today. You might not be where you want to be today, but I got news for you. It's only Friday. Sunday is coming. You just got to hang in there. Sunday is coming. Don't you judge anything before it's time. Well, you know, it, it, it ain't happen now. It ain't going to happen. Church, I need you to understand, God has worked with a whole lot of old people. In fact, he, they didn't do nothing until they got old. God had to wait for them to get old and get some wisdom. He didn't work with Moses until he was eight. He didn't work with Abraham until he was 100. Come on, church, let me get an amen. I'm trying to tell you, don't you judge anything before it's time because Sunday Sunday is coming. Hang in there and let the Lord have his way. I wish I got a witness up today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
church, I need you to know the lesson from the cross is to trust what God said. Stop looking at your circumstances. But yeah, well, if they would just give me a raise, if somebody would just recognize me, you don't even know what God's going to do. He might get you to start your own company. Stop work. You just at Friday right now. Don't worry about that. God got that thing already prepared. He said it. You believe it. That settles it. And come Sunday morning, you be listening. You be like Mary. Huh? Don't be like the don't be like them dumb men sitting back there in the upper room scared to go. The Bible says, I read that just this morning. I know it was you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Got me up this morning. I read that story over and over again. But today I looked and I saw something new. It said that Mary and the girls went to the tomb. And on the way to the tomb, they thought to themselves, wait a minute. The tomb is closed. It's sealed. How are we going to take these spices and put them on his body when it's sealed? But while they were walking there to the tomb to put the spices on the Lord, their mind said, this don't make no sense because the tomb's closed. But their heart said, that's all right. We going anyway. You need to have a we going anyway attitude. You need to stop thinking about, well, uh, this can't happen. But what does the Lord say? Down on the inside of Mary, she got the vision, the revelation, the remembrance that the Lord said, on the third day, I will rise. She didn't know how, but she said, let's go and see. Turn to somebody and say, let's go and see. Go and see. I need some let's go and see people up in here. Trust what God said. Sunday is coming. Trust what God said. The victory of Christ came on Sunday morning, and thank God there was somebody who went there, even though they didn't understand. The Bible says, they said, the stone was covering the tomb, and they said, and it's a big stone, and it's very heavy. They said, that's all right. Nevertheless, we going. Somebody say, nevertheless, I'm going. So I'm rising on up. I'm going to the top. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what people say. I know how they talked about me when I was growing up. I know what you might say about me right now. Nevertheless, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going. God said I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. Sunday is coming, and I'm going. The victory of Christ was over sin, death, the devil and the grave, and I'm here to tell you that if you believe in the victory of Christ, you're going to have victory in Christ over the same. You're going to have victory over the devil. You won't have to worry about the devil because you understand now the devil is not omniscient. You understand the devil is not omnipotent. The Bible says if the devil was omniscient, he, he wouldn't have killed Jesus, he would have known that he played right into God's hand. The princes of the world would not have killed Jesus had they known who he was and what he could do. Church, you got some power now in Christ if you believe the gospel. You got to give God praise. So church, when things don't look right, seem right, sound right, or what? Feel right. You need to know that you have the victory as long as you hold on to what God said. And I'm telling you today, God said that he got up and he said the same spirit that raised him from the dead. Listen, listen, listen. You need to get this now. The same spirit that raised him from the dead. I'm talking Romans chapter 8 now. I believe it's verse 11. The same spirit that raised him from the dead is on the inside of you. Somebody say, put your hands to your chest. So put your hands to your chest. Say, I got some power. I got resurrection power. It's on the inside of me. I can rise up above challenges. I can rise up above obstacles. I can rise up above addictions. I can rise up above unforgiveness. I can rise up above racism. I can rise up above my debts. I can rise up above my anger and my temper. I can rise up because I got resurrection power on the inside. My time is up and I thank you for yours. God is good. And I prophesy that because of the revelation of Christ, we're going to have victory in Christ. This church is going to grow. We're going to grow. We're going to go. And we don't care 
if the sun is over the tomb, give God some praise one more time. Hallelujah. Got resurrection power. I got resurrection power. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Here's about just look. We never want to take it for granted that everybody, under the sound of my voice, has that resurrection power, has given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to first of all deal with our broadcast audience. If you're listening online, we don't, we don't want to take for granted that you're saved. You can be saved if you put your trust in the victory of Christ. The Bible says it like this in Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, see, that he overcame death, he overcame sin. Most importantly, he overcame the devil. Jesus, oh, I need you to know that Jesus overcame the devil. And I don't know nobody else that did. No one else. No one else. You can talk to me about African history all you want to. Ain't nobody else overcome the devil but the Son of God. And it's only one. God so loved the world that he gave his oh, only yeah. begotten son. His only born son. That's it. The rest of us are adopted. We just got, we just got grafted in by the, by the spirit of adoption. But he's got one son. The righteous son, Jesus Christ. And if you confess him as Lord and Savior, you too will have the victory of Christ. Let us all pray this salvation prayer together. Some, maybe for the first time, others reaffirming it. Say with me. Say, God. God. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I believe, I believe in, my heart in my heart that you so love the world that you gave your only son, you your only Jesus, son Christ, Jesus Christ to come into the world, into the world as, the as the perfect sin sacrifice for all men. For all men. He, he, took all he took on all men's sin and then he died. To pay for that sin. Okay. But on the third day, the third you raise him from the dead, from the dead proving, proving that he's the conquering Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Save, me, Save me. And I will love you will love and you serve you and serve all the days of my life. Of my life. Because, of my faith, because of my faith, I am saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. God bless you and our broadcast out there. If you uh, have just received the Lord in your heart, we pray that you'll find a good Bible teaching church where they recognize that Jesus is Lord and the Bible is the Word of God and get involved in the plan of God there at the local church. And if you're here in the... Los Angeles County area, Southern California area, come visit us. The information is up on the screen where you can contact us. And stay tuned to this broadcast for other life-changing, God-filled, spirit-filled messages in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise for the broadcast.